Hello, welcome to another video by Moxa Marine. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to basically call, title this video Anatomy of a Lifter, but uh, I want to show you what a collapsed valve lifter looks like. So if you look in there, there's a cup there. Uh, that's where the push rod sits, that shiny little circle down in there. Um, and that the, the uh, push rod sits on what I call the uh, cup, and that cup should be resting against this wire keeper up here at the top. Right down, there's a, like a square wire keeper, and that cup should spring load and be back resting against that keeper, but it's not. You can see there's a gap. There's a gap in there, and that means this lifter's collapsed. It doesn't mean there's something wrong. It doesn't mean the lifter's bad. It means it's full of goop, and it can't spring back because it's full of crud and, and uh, oil and stuff. So this is what's oozing out of that lifter. This is not something you want to put back there and run without cleaning it out. I can clean this lifter and make it usable again, but before I do that, the first thing I do is I spin this wheel right here. If it feels rough at all, if I can feel any roughness in the bearings, there's needle bearings in there if you look down in there. So if I can feel any roughness at all, I throw this lifter away. It's not even, not even worth trying to uh, clean and fix. But this one feels pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna take this lifter apart and then I'll, uh, I'll do that off camera. And then I'll show you what come out of it in the order which it comes out. Um, to get it apart, you just, pop this keeper out with a sharp tool and uh, then sometimes it's hard to get the guts to come out you have to slam it on wood or, or something to get it to, uh, all the stuff to, the pieces to come out but I'll do my best and uh, once I get it apart I'll show you what it looks like. I now have the lifter uh, disassembled at least partially the uh, what I call the plunger is still stuck inside and I can't get it to come out but I'm going to show you a trick on how I get that out but um, so far the only thing that's come out is this this is a, uh, a check valve a disc check valve that's the uh, cup that the uh, that's the other that's the bottom side of the cup that the uh, push rod sits in. I'll discuss that later. But right now I'm still trying to get it apart. So I have a trick. So what I do is I take this is a uh, seven sixteenths uh, socket and uh, I put it inside. It fits just perfectly inside this uh, lifter to push down that plunger, and it's almost the same diameter as the plunger. And I put it in a vise and I squeeze it just a little bit to kind of break that. Uh, plunger loose inside that lifter. Once I break it, I'm pushing it in, but it breaks it up. And then I put some uh, PB blaster or some kind of penetrant oil in there to kind of help free it up. And if you keep working it back and forth, it'll eventually maybe come loose and you can uh, tap it on wood and get it to pop out. So that's what I'm gonna do now and see if I can get this uh, lifter, um, the lifter apart. Okay, in the previous video segment, I discussed uh, how to take these valve lifters apart. And uh, so when you finally get it apart, this is the body. This is the valve body, it's a hollow cavity down in there. And it's got a hole in the side of it for oil to come into the, uh, into the uh, inside the body right there. So that's the, uh, that's the body. Then this is what I think they call this, the plunger. And uh, so it's got, it's also got a hole in it. There's a hole there. The plunger is inside the body and rides up and down inside the body. And it's uh, spring loaded, it's on this spring right here. And I'll show you how this goes back when I put it back together. But that spring right there is what pushes the plunger up out of the body, uh, or tries to anyway. It pushes, it pushes up against this keeper spring here, this stop here, all right? So when you clean these lifters, um, the most important part that you have to clean is this ball check valve right here. It's in the bottom of the plunger. Um, these lifters that I'm cleaning right now, I'd already cleaned uh, 12 lifters, but I did not take this check valve apart. I did not check because I didn't know that it was that easy, but um, I, I assumed it was a non-serviceable part and I did not take it apart. And then uh, realized that that's the most important part of this lifter. So I did come back and now I'm cleaning them again. So you can see that ball check valves there's a lot of sludge and old oil group, group gooped up in here. Um, so I'm fixing to put, I take Dawn and I clean it out, get all the old oil up. I clean the, I clean the plunger, I clean, clean the ball, I clean the, uh, this cap here, and also there's a tiny spring right there that pushes against the ball and keeps it pressed up against this plunger. That's your ball check valve. Without the spring, it wouldn't be a, a valve. It would just fall down and not do anything. So I, I'll, let me get this cleaned up and I'll explain how this all works. Okay, I now have all these lifter pieces cleaned. I got the ball cleaned. I got the, the, the uh, ball check valve cap cleaned, the little tiny spring cleaned. I've got the plunger cleaned and uh, ready to start assembling it. Oh, and also the, uh, this spring here. So the first thing you do is you put the ball, the ball and the tiny spring back in the uh, plunger there, and then you put the cap on it and uh, 
that'll be that assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then I'll get back to you. Okay, I got the, the ball check valve assembled again in the plunger. This is the plunger here. And um, so that's your ball check valve. There's the ball down there. Let me see if you can see it down there. There's, yeah, there's the ball right there. All right. So the way this thing works is the body, when the body is, uh, it's upside down right now. So the bottom, inside this body of this lifter, there's two chambers. There's a lower chamber and upper chamber. The lower chamber is formed by this plunger inside the body. Whatever's below this plunger is the lower chamber. That's the chamber that fills up with oil and takes up the slack. That's the, that's the chamber that adjusts the lifter to take out the slack in your valve system. It takes all the slack out all the way to the point that the lifter is riding, touching the base circle of the cam, the, which is the opposite side of the load. And so you, it takes up zero slack, but it won't take up any more because the oil pressure coming in from your oil pump can't overcome the pressure of the valve spring. The valve spring is 100 pounds, so there's no way that the the uh, pressure inside this lifter can push against that uh, valve in its closed state and open it. So uh, it will fill it with oil, but it won't fill it with any more oil than it takes to take up the slack. That's in the lower chamber. And the way it works is the oil comes into this upper chamber, it comes into the body of the lifter, and then it comes in through this into the plunger inside here, in, in the inside of the plunger, through that hole by my thumbnail there, and uh, it gets inside this chamber. And then um, the oil pump is pumping, but also the first time that this lifter tries to lift, tries to open a valve, since there's no oil in the body, if, it, if the lifter's been cleaned and it's dry, then the lift, this plunger drops, pushes down inside the uh, body and creates a, uh, and pushes in, into air, basically, and compresses it. So the air leaks out, but then when it comes back up, it creates a vacuum underneath it and it sucks oil. It, not only does it is oil pressure from the oil pump, but it also sucks oil into the bottom of the lifter. So the vacuum created by the first action. And so it goes to the check valve. But once the oil is in, here's the key point. Once the oil is in the bottom chamber, it can't come out. There's nowhere for it to escape. It can't come back through the ball check valve. So the only place it can escape is beside in the gap between the, uh, the body of the plunger and the body and the inside body of the lifter, which is very, very tight clearance. So you can bleed it, you can force that oil out, but it takes a while. And that's why the lifter works because it, the lifter will have, acts so fast when it's lifting a valve that it doesn't have time to leak out of the lifter. So like I say, the bottom chamber is what does the, uh, the taking up the slack and the adjusting. The top chamber is also got oil in it and it's used as a pump to pump oil to the top of the valve train. All right, I have yet to figure out exactly how this pump mechanism works. I will do that. When I do figure it out, I'll do another video to explain that. But for now, just know that the top chamber acts as a reservoir and pumps oil up through this. Uh, there's a hole here in the cap. I call this the uh, the cup, actually. And the cup is the part of the lifter. And then there's an orifice, or it's uh, actually an oil, it's um, a flow metering device. This is a, this little disc here meters to flow so it doesn't pump oil continuously. And um, I'm gonna have to, uh, to figure out how it works. I'm gonna have to turn a motor over and uh, actually watch a motor running and use a timing light to see when it's pumping, see what part of the stroke of the engine it's pumping oil so I know how it operates. I need to know where the piston's at and what the, uh, actually where the, basically where the cam is at when it's moving oil so then I can figure out how it works. But for the time being, I just know that it pumps oil to the top of the engine. So, um, there's, there's, like I said, the critical thing you have to know is that this, this check valve is probably the, the most important part of this lifter. It has to let oil flow from the top chamber into the bottom chamber. If it's corroded or it's full of crud and it's uh, full of hardened oil and, and uh, basically uh, sludge, the lifter will collapse. That's, that's, all those lifters back there are collapsed. They're full of sludge. They're my spares. I can clean them up and use parts of them to fix other lifters, but those are, those are probably the worst ones I've got. They're full of sludge all came out of the same engine. Uh, it actually came out of the engine, uh, the video where I did where it was a truck engine that somebody put in a boat. But, um, so the bottom line is that uh, when you clean these lifters, you have to clean it thoroughly. You have to go all the way inside this cup here, or this cap, take that apart, clean the ball, clean the spring, clean it all out and get it completely clean. I didn't think that was serviceable, but it is. And the way I do it, I just take a very fine pointed screw and the tip put the screw down that little slot inside there and just pop this cap back out. So uh, so that's how you clean the lifters. Um, by the way, these are very small parts and it's very easy to lose them. That's why I'm working over a sink. When I'm doing something really stupid, I've got a drain on my sink. So I have lost one ball down that drain already, but I have enough spares to 
to them, but I don't care. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this lifter, put it all back together, and then uh, put it back in the engine. Um, like I say, I will uh, once I figure out how the pump works, I'll do a separate video on that. But um, this concludes my video on um, anatomy of a valve lifter, and um, that's how they work. The bottom, like I say, the bottom chamber is what takes up the slack. The top chamber is what pumps oil up out of the out of this lifter. And um, the uh, oh, the reason you might ask, well, why am I cleaning them? Why don't I just buy new? And that's that's a good question. They uh, they're brand new. I think about twelve, fifteen dollars each. Um, my labor, if I'm charged a hundred dollars an hour, uh, which I don't really do that, but uh, ideally I'd like to make a hundred dollars an hour. If I was charged a hundred dollars an hour, it takes fifteen minutes to clean one. That's twenty-five dollars. So uh, it makes kind of wasting money. The reason, or wasting time and money, the reason I do this is because um, all over YouTube and the internet, uh, there's a lifter aftermarket lifters are known to be um, are known to be defective. They might be just the flat tappets, I'm not sure, but um, these are genuine GM lifters. I would rather have a clean, genuine GM lifter than an aftermarket lifter from some other manufacturer. So that's, for me, if I'm gonna warranty this motor, I'd rather have a clean GM lifter than a, I mean, a used clean GM lifter than some aftermarket lifter where I don't know what's, um, I don't know how well it's made and what its reliability is and what the tolerances are. So that's why I'd rather clean them and uh, know that they're good. And then I also check them. Like I said, I did a video where I pumped them up uh, I'll put a link to that video in, at the end of this or in the uh, description of this video but um, I test all my lifters by pumping them up with oil before I could seal up the motor and that way I know the lifters are good so all right I'll go ahead and put this lifter back together and then I'll show you what it looks like right after uh, right after I finish putting it back together okay the lifter has now been fully reassembled and put back together the keeper spring is in back in there and it's keeping the cup inside there um, as I was saying um, or, or well, let me add two more things about these lifters. Um, a lot of people, I try to do things if, in order to have a business, you need to be efficient in everything you do. And so one of the uh, things that people recommend you do with these lifters is uh, immerse them in oil, soak them in oil overnight to have them fill up with oil. Based on what you've seen in this video, um, that check valve is not going to let oil that's not under pressure go past it. The, the lower chamber of this lifter is not going to fill it with oil uh, just by putting it inside oil. Um, and my, I have my doubts that the upper chamber will even fill up with oil. I don't think oil is going to enter that hole uh, on its own without being forced under pressure. So soaking these lifters in a tub of oil overnight, I don't think it's going to do anything. Uh, matter of fact, I'll do a separate video one day to prove that soaking these in oil overnight, a, a fresh lifter overnight, does nothing. Um, so what I'm going to do, or so what I do is I pressurize oil, I prime the engine and pressurize these lifters in the engine to pump them up with oil so that I know they got oil in them yeah, and they can be dry at that point. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, so basically, as I stated, the check valve keeps the lower chamber, uh, oil out of the lower chamber unless it's forced in there through pressure or a vacuum through, action, through mechanical action. So um, you can see that once that lower chamber fills up oil, it's, it's gonna take a long time for whatever's in there to come out. So if you have a water oil mix in your engine, and you get that uh, uh, pancake batter looking oil, emulsified oil water mix inside this lifter, it's not gonna come out just by flushing, uh, just by running the engine. It's gonna take a long time for that, that goop inside here to come back out of this lifter and, and get washed out back into your oil and get uh, burned off. Uh, and I, I don't I don't think it's gonna, I would say a long, long time. So um, the point I'm making is if you ever get your engine submerged in water or if you order, you get water in your oil, um, you will be okay as long as you don't run the engine. So in other words, if you submerge an engine and, and uh, it gets water inside your engine and you don't run it, you'll be okay because then the water and the oil can, will separate and you can get it out. But once you run that engine, then the engine acts like a blender and makes that uh, oil and water mix until emulsification and that, that goo and that thick goo is pumped inside these lifters you're not getting it out. You're gonna have to take the lifter out, lifters out and clean them just like I'm doing here, mechanically take them apart and clean them out to get all that goo out of there. And so um, I'm doing another video about water damage and um, uh, what water, uh, what submerging an engine in water and what the damage has done to it or what damage water does to it. And so one of the damages is lifters fill it with water, a goo of water and oil mix and it's not coming out. So to, to really properly clean it, you gotta take all the lifters out mechanically clean them like I'm doing here. All right, so that wraps up this video. Um, 
hope it helped you and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching.